uh, our second speaker today, uh, uh, well, in this morning, <laughs> morning for us here in, in the tropic. Um, uh, the, our second speaker today is Lucas Seco, Lucas Conque Seco Ferreira. He's a, he's a professor at the University of Brasilia in the center of the country. And uh, he works with Lee, Lee Group since his PhD that he, he has done here in Campinas. And uh, he's now in Brasilia for, so for some time. He, he will talk about, well, most of the people know, know him also here, Lucas. Lucas is always in, in our meetings. Uh, this UNB is University of Brasilia. Uh, he will talk about the on the embeddability, it's written here, of the homogeneous Ricci flow and its collapses. Okay, Lucas, thank you for giving us a talk here, and uh, uh, you are welcome. Okay, thank you all. Are you listening to me? Tom, Tom, of him, Tom of him. Yeah, the screen is all right. Okay, so thank you for the invitation. And for the organizing committee, which includes myself, but mostly from Rio de Fora and UF, which organized this meeting. And it's nice to see you all here, although not in, in presence. And I will talk today about this work, which San Martin already told you about, the, the title. This is a work in collaboration with Mauro Patrão, here from UNB and Lohan Speranza from UNIFESP, we, we submitted this year. And so now it's September 2021, pandemic year two. Uh, so uh, a little outline. First, uh, about uh, I would talk about some techniques that we use to study this problem of embeddability and the, the, which we call it projected Richie flow, uh, and the the this this work come from comes from the urge to try to understand rich the rich flow, embedding it in a in clear inner space. So in order to do that, we 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 went to examples because rich flows are very complicated stuff, and we introduced symmetries and more symmetries and work with flag manifolds so we could produce examples of this type of embedding and this projected richie flow which i'll talk about later this is the one you you see here this this picture of this wise old man with a wrinkled face which is meditating this is the projected richie flow so i, I want you to take home from this lecture this, if you can take home this picture, I will be happy. I will explain throughout the lecture what, what's the meaning of all this in the picture. The, this, this red circle, for example, right, represents the uh, results of embedding, embedding the richer flow. And when we talk about a little about that in the second part. And mostly we are also interested in the collapses, not only the richer flow, but in the collapses which happen here at the boundary, okay? And then at, at the end, I will talk about the, or what to do next, what, what we are thinking about. Okay, let's start with the Richie flow. Uh, if you're not living under a rock, the, the last years you have heard about the Richie flow. Uh, and our, our, our question to how to embed it in an RN is a, is a question many, many people have asked including there are some interesting negative results. This, this recent. So it's not easy to, it's not trivial to, to embed it, especially the, the collapse. Uh, so Richie flow is a, is a, is a flow on, on, the, on the metric. You flow the metric through the Richie curvature. Uh, usually, actually, you, you have a rich flows where you have a family of flows, 
one, one usually works with a normalization by the volume. So you get a, a, a unit volume which you flow, which preserves the volume of the, the metric. And this unit volume which flow, it's very easy to see that it's equilibrium uh, matrix that satisfy this. The matrix proportional to Ricci curvature. So this, these are the so-called Einstein matrix. It's a kind of the round metric to say. And the philosophy to study the rich flow is to think of, of it as a, a kind of gradient flow. It's a kind of, it's not, it's not gradient in some situation it is, but the philosophy is to think it's a gradient flow that makes the metric more and more round, the, the equilibria, uh, the Einstein matrix, okay? But the rich flow is a, is a, is a PDE. So it's, it's hard to study in general. And since we're, we, are, we, are, we want to produce examples and, and, and see the re bad rich flows in, in some situations, we introduce symmetries. Uh, and when we do that, our geometrical problem becomes an algebraic problem and vice versa. The algebra informs the geometry. When you do that, we, you, you look. You, if you look, for example, rich flows on a homogeneous space, and you can look at not all the metrics, but only the invariant metrics. And since you ha have a, a G action, so you, you take the, the metrics with, with R such that the G acts by isometries. So when you look at this flow in the in the only in the invariant metrics, you get an ODE. Uh, it's a nonlinear ODE and, and stuff, but it's easier to work this, work it out because you don't have to work with the metric in all the space. You have only need to look at it in the in the choose a base point and work with the metric there because the, the an invariant metric is determined by this, and the metrics that are appear. Uh, are uh, metrics that are uh, such that the isotropy representation acts by isometries. Right? It's not all metrics. And you can model this, the, the tangent space of this homogeneous space by this quotient. And the, re the isotropy representation becomes a very familiar representation, which is a, a joint representation in this quotient. But even this is not always simple. So that's why we, we go to flag manifolds. The, the great property of flag manifolds have uh, with respect to geometry is that it's, it's a joint representation is very well known. So we ask for more symmetries. Uh, our results are, are about general flag manifolds. I will specify later which ones, so the, the, which flag manifolds the, the, the results hold. But I will illustrate uh, the results with the classical UN type A flag manifolds. So have don't have much time. So maybe if I, uh, using this example, I expect that things become more clear. So our, our homogeneous manifolds will be the flag manifolds. Okay, which are the, you you can think of in this example is a, a nested subspace manifolds of nested subspaces and which have this name because of this incidence uh, incidence relation, you can think like that. It's a subspace, it's the pole and the, of, of, the, of the other. And we choose, we choose the, our base points in this, this example, we choose this, this space, CM, CM plus N, okay? So this, the unitary, uh, group X transitively here. And the isotropy has to do with the sizes. So isotropy has to do with the, blo the blocks. These are the kind of matrices that stabilize this guy. Uh, this block that we see in the UN type, more generally you describe by simple roots, the simple roots that lie inside this block, they determine the, the the isotropy. And since we're dealing with complex flag manifolds, they determine the whole manifold. 
the, the, this is important also. We're dealing with compact with, with complex flag manifolds because we want to have a, as, as simple as possible representational theory of the adjoint action. Okay. So if we, we get an homogeneous space, let's let's see how to, to describe how the homogeneous Ricci flow works here. First, we describe the, the how the, the mat environment metrics work in this case. So the isotropy so superiority is like that. The, 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 those those blocks. Note that I, I wrote these blocks kind of like uh, 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 square, but they are not always a square because this, this numbers M and P they can be different. So actually, these these blocks are rectangular blocks. Okay, this above the diagonal. And th th this guys above the diagonal is what models the, the tangent space. And since, since we are working with anti-unitary matrices, actually you can look just uh, above the diagonal. And the environment, the environment matrix, the, the you to to work with the environment matrix, you have to use the the decomposition of the isotropy representation, which in the case of flag manifolds is is very very has a very nice structures. It's the structures of these blocks. They are called the T roots. They are not exactly roots. Uh, they are roots uh, not in the isotropy, restricted to, to some subspace of the of the of the maximal torus. But hey, they have similar structure. They have bracket structures and, and, and so on. Here we are working with like uh, flag manifolds with three summons. So you have three blocks, three rectangular blocks. Okay, uh, so the joint representation is like that, and and in our case, it's it's the it's the conjugation. This kind of result, which classifies all the the, the, the isotropy representations of complex flag manifolds, is a work by Desia Bento in the seventies, and we use it to 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 describe our environment matrix. This, this, this kind of, this structure that appears, the T roots, they are not entirely classified. They are, the classification up to now is, is in, still in a case by case analysis. And for example, the, the, the classification with two and three summons is here. You classify this, this what can appear here by looking at the so-called dinking mark of the roots, which is the, the coefficient that the, the roots outside the isotropy, coefficients that each of these roots appear in the highest highest weight, highest roots. Okay. And for one, two, three summons, these are the possibilities. And for for, for example, for this this kind of two roots that have this this kind of structure, you see that it's it's they are, they are much like the A type roots, but they include much more than that. They include manifold flag manifolds uh, of type A of type D, and also an exceptional type. Okay, so we are we are we. Are we we use an example of this guy, but keep in mind that it includes more. It includes two infinite families and one more. Okay, so how are the invariant metrics? Well, once you know these this blocks over the diagonal, the, the, it's very simple. You, the uh, invariant metric is given by specifying a parameter, a positive parameter for each one of these blocks. When you do that, the, the rich flow becomes an, an ODE on these parameters. And then you have to know what is the, the, the rich tensor. The, this is also computed still in a case by case analysis. There is some general theory, but you, you, when, you, when you go to, ex to examples, you have to compute some brackets. And this is 
the work being done today, up to five summons. Uh, and so these guides, which gives the rich flow, it's, this is a, it, here. I, I ha, it's the rich flow from the the K, from the unitary flag manifold. But these guys, in general, they come from the brackets among those blocks over the diagonal. Okay, so you we want to study this kind of flow. But this flow has some nice properties. Uh, for example, if we take a, a metric and scale it, you can think that they have essentially the same geometry. So it's natural to, when you study this flow, since you want to study the geometry, it's natural to normalize it. The typical normalization that is done is the, the volume one normalization. But this has some problems because the volume one, this, the, the submanifold of volume one matrix, which in the case of invariant matrix is a surface like this, is non-compact. So this is very, this is not good to study collapse. So that, that's why we introduced the projected rich flow which is a much simpler version. We simply, instead of compactifying to volume one matrix, we, we, we instead of restricting to volume one matrix, we restrict it to this simplex, which becomes easier to classify. So that picture in the beginning was actually the, the picture of the flow in this simplex, okay? And here you can see the collapses happen. If you, you studied it on a volume one, Metrics of volume, the collapses go to infinity and, and you cannot see them. Okay, so this is a, the projected rich flow, which is our main tool. This was introduced in the previous work by, by my, me, myself, uh, Lohan, Mauro, and Grama, Lino Grama, Ricardo Miranda, submitted also. And now we go to the, the question of embedding with symmetries. There are some, some results. Like there, there exists a nice result by Moore Shafley. It's kind of a Whitney embedding and Whitney equivalent embedding theory. But the 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 thing is, you can use the results, these results, to embed invariant metrics also, but only compact sets of invariant metrics. And this doesn't work for us because we want to study the collapse, so we need to look at non-compact sets of invariant metrics. So what we did was use, instead of using any embedding of the flag manifold, use a canonical embedding that comes with every flag manifold, which is the, you, see, you look at the, the flag manifold as an adjoint orbit. So it's an embedding in, in Slee algebra. And we, we first asked, Okay, what are the, are the metrics that come from this uh, joint in meeting? And this is a, an easy computation. And, and you see using the, the brackets and, and root spaces and all, you see that the, you get what, what must be the parameters of the metric in order for, the, for it to come from a, from uh, embedding as, a, as an adjoint orbit. And this guy, the, the freedom we have when we embed it is a joint orbit, is choosing this guy. So we, this is the source. This guy has to be chosen in order for that this to hold. The metric will satisfy this. And our, our idea was to, to try to transform the rich flow in a flow of this guy. This guy, in, in, in principle, it lives in the Lie algebra, but by diagonalization, actually, it lives in a smaller space of the block diagonal matrices here. So we got this, and those equations, you you using the using the roots and, and using this. This classification, the fact that the, we were working with these guys, these equations become simply the equation of a, a right cone. So you, you can see that in the in the simplex, the matrix the uh, the matrix that are realized 
as an adjoint orbit is the circle, this inscribed circle. But that's not that's not much because the flow is going around all around. So what we did was to realize more metrics, we considered products of the adjoint, not only the adjoint in G, but in products of G, the diagonal ash. And the metrics are like this. So we have more freedom. And what we got is the following. What, what, what are the metrics that we realize by, by taking products? The circle and what more? And we have this nice result that actually we get the convex closure of the circle. And then the most we can get, with, we, we, we don't have to do many products because if, if you do the products by the, the, the rank of the flag manifold, which is the, the di dimension of the space, you already get the more you can, the most you can get out of this. By, by using products of adjoint orbits. So we have this guy, this is a, the convex closure of this initial circle, but this is a general result. And if the two roots of, of, of type A, then we, have, we can prove in general that this guy has no empty interior, so we can realize a lot of metrics. Uh, this proof is very, 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 very ingenious because actually what we prove that we look at this map, the map, uh, this map is gives its image, gives all the metrics that can be real, realized by the product of K, K adjoint orbits. And actually it's it's a quadratic map, it's a map, it's a map that encodes this kind of, the metrics that are given by this parameter. It's a quadratic map. But actually, we, we can factor it through a linear map that depends on the structure's constants and a, and a map that's very well known. That's the, we call it the Gram map. So this kind of result, for example, comes from this. It's a, it's a standard result that the, the positive symmetric matrices are uh, the convex closure of the, of the ones with rank one. And the ones in rank one, we can show that they come from taking k equals one. So we have this convexity result. Uh, and uh, if we take k, k products, we get this matrix. So we only have to understand this linear map that depends on the structure constants and this map, the gray map. But this gray map is, is well known. It's actually the closure of a well-known map, which is the quotient map of this principal bundle. So it's, and it's natural that this kind of map appear here, right? Because when you look at metrics and inner products, this is the guy, but we are, we are trying to look at collapses also. So you have to take some kind of closure and this map appears. And while this map is trivial, it's well-known, you take the square root, we, we we show that this is not when you take the closure you lose the, the triviality and this this triviality has to do the the look when you look for sections of this map this has to do with this kind of description to take the richie flow and describe it as a flow of a of an element in the Lie algebra uh, lucas uh, lucas wait are are these sets mk always invariant by the Ricci flow? That's, that's what I will say now. Uh, so we proved this by, with four flags with three summons. For a flag with three summons, this are now not only the circle can be realized, but now you can realize the interior, taking product of, of two, two adjoint orbits. Uh, and we proved, uh, this was a surprising result for us. Uh, you can actually use you can see the picture that it's invariant right but okay let's we're, we're mathematicians let's prove it we prove it prove it only for this case it's uh, and it's we are we are very curious to know what about the other cases because is the the 
the, the first thing you, you is we approach this from three, three summons, right? But the first thing to ask is these are three summons phenomena or it's, is it general? Uh, we don't know. We are, we are, we are investigating that. What okay. we can say right now is that with three summons, the rich flow can be realized like this. So what the rich flow is right here. So what you, what you do to take it here, you take this this map and take sections of it. When the square roots works, the non-triviality only means that you cannot map the boundary to just one factor. You have to work with two factor if you want if you want a continuous flow on the. So this is a, the realization we got so far for, for the rich flows. And the collapses are they are illustrated here. Uh, they are this is a nice result also. Some some collapses are embedded. So these collapses we already proved in the, the, the other paper I mentioned with Lino and Ricardo. Uh, we had proved intrinsically with Gromov House of Convergence that all what what happens with all these collapses. Here we wanted to do to see these collapses intrinsically, and, and, the, the, and we saw them happening here. But this call these other collapses in the other points could also happen, but not with this realization, right? We could use another embedding, but we proved that no, we, we have a criteria to to know which collapses are a necessary condition for a collapse to, to happen in an equivalent embedding. And these do not. OK? So we proved bo both positive and negative results about these, these collapses. And what the wise man is meditating is that these are three phenomena the invariance in general, we have some strategies, but we haven't done that yet because in this the case we done here, it, it was it was uh, computation case by case analysis because as a this disco discovers these three cases, right? So we proved invariance by using the rich rich vector field in each of these cases, and they work it perfectly. But what to do in the general case, we still don't know. But we, we, are, we are, this is one of the, the things we are most curious in this because when you discover that something, actually, I, I, I said invariance, but it's forward invariance. It's not invariance because it enters and don't come, don't come out. And this kind of invariance, when you discover sets that are forward invariance, this can be interesting to study the problem in general. And also, of course, what other representations are useful to this kind of study other than the adjoint representation. Okay. So these are our main references. The, the article I told you about. I told you about all of that also. And yeah, that's it. Thank you for your patience. Thank you, Lucas. Thank you, Lucas. Any questions? I don't see any hands on the... Um, Carl hey, Lucas, Lucas, it, it looks, at right. least in this example, that all Einstein metrics are embedded is that true in general yeah the, that we don't know but that's also a question when we ask ourselves here right i don't know you can see you say this this 
in this example, yes. The, actually, this is a UN example, but the, the, the other are just like this. And this is another question we don't know. We, we are curious about. The, okay. all, 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 if it, is this a general phenomenon? Is that uh, other we're thinking about also what can because one of the main problems in this in this in this field is the question of the finiteness of Einstein metrics in homogeneous manifolds in general. Even in the if you restrict to flag manifolds, this is still a very wide open question. So maybe we can prove that they are embeddable or they the there are only a finite type, finite number of types of collapse. Some finites, finiteness results, but we, we don't know. Okay, thanks. So you, you you were using a normalization which is different from the volume one normalization. But yeah. are the fixed points that you get automatically Einstein matrix regardless of the normalization? Yeah, because the 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 what well, that means you go back to the normalization. The analytically the, the feature of the, the Ricci Ricci Rich vector field is that it is a homogeneous of degree zero. So, okay, if you if you normalize, taking care of this of this homogeneity, you get inclu including we get the, the nice nice thing about the volume one normalization it's that's the it's a gradient gradient of the scalar curvature. Uh, with this. We tried, but we didn't. We couldn't show that it was gradient or something. But we we showed that it was gradient like. There there is a, a a nice function which decreases along the orbits, but not on the on the on the singularities. This was important for our, our analysis. So for the fixed points, the normalization does not really play a big. Role. I mean, just no, just, just, uh, just uh, scale, yeah. scale up. Thanks. The thing it was to to use some, some normalization that we, we could see the, the the limits, the collapses mm -hmm. happening. Lucas, can you work with all the? Invariant metrics that are embedded in a similar way with embedding. You took a, a, a specific embedding of the, the flag. Yeah. Mm. So, what, what is the question? Sorry. Can the I question work? If, uh, with other in, embeddings. Yeah. I'm, I'm just starting to think about like the, the, the projective embedding you mentioned yesterday. You can also use, but not. And this would be not an, an, in an, would be not an Euclidean embedding. It would be an, a projective embedding. But you, you could also work like this. It would change this this kind of restriction. Okay. But maybe if it doesn't change very much, it becomes something amenable. Okay. Because the 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 the, the, the great this great stuff here was. Where is this 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 factorization? So this depends a lot on the adjoint representation. Representation. Okay. But maybe there are some others that have this kind of. Uh, I expect you're dealing with metrics. You expect some something quadratic here. But the the thing is to get something quadratic that's manageable. <laughs> And this was was surprisingly the case. <laughs> okay, okay. More questions? 
it seems that not that there are not any more questions. So let's thank Lucas again.